Good morning, everybody, and a happy Monday morning to you all. I hope everybody had an absolutely fabulous weekend. Okay, just as an FYI, video three is not about the royal family due to lack of content. Remember, they're on vacation. So this is all Harry and Meghan stuff, video one, video two, and video three. And a big thank you to Lizzie for my thumbnails. I love them. All right, let's jump in and cover this, shall we? Let's go. We're going to look at these pictures. These are people who work for Invictus. So you have to think that these people know what's going on and let's just jump into this whole story. It's unbelievable. When Harry and Meghan went to British Columbia in February to help promote you know, the, the Invictus games and they were in Vancouver and Whistler for three days, three days between February 14th and 16th, and remember, they flew in by private jet. We showed you guys, you know, we showed him them coming and going. Remember, they were there for three days. It cost the British Columbian people $44,000 in police overtime. And that was found out by a Freedom of Information request. Now stick with me, this is where it gets interesting. The Invictus Games reimbursed, okay, $10,221 of that through cost recovery is what they're calling it. But the Canadian taxpayers were still held responsible for 34,333 in overtime expenses. And that accounted for 390 hours of work. And that was overtime police security. Now Invictus gave a statement. Doug Maynard, the director for security for Invictus, in Vancouver Whistler said, the police were in charge of public safety, but Prince Harry's security was covered through private funds that taxpayers did not fund the Duke and Duchess of Sussex security during their visit, that their private security detail was paid for, listen to this, by individual donations directed by the donors for that purpose. Public safety was ensured by Vancouver police resources in that area should issues have arisen due to protests at that time. Did you catch what was just said? Remember, in February of 2020, Harry and Meghan announced that they would no longer be receiving royal security after they decided to drop their titles and step away. But then Canada spent nearly $60,000 for security for Harry and Meghan when they were there in no, from November of 2019 to January of 2020. And one of the people from the Canadian Taxpayer Federation stood up and said, you know, tens of thousands of dollars is nothing to sneeze at. And it's hard to understand why taxpayers are footing this bill. The government owes taxpayers a clear explanation on the, what the policy is in these circumstances because taxpayers are paying and we don't need why. And we know now, of course, that Harry has been trying to overturn the government decision to re, you know, remove his security. So let me go back and remind you what was said. It, what was said was that the Invictus Games took donations and spent that money on Harry and Meghan. They admitted that they're using donations for Invictus on Harry and Meghan's security. And they're saying that the donors directed their, you know, donations to go to that. Something is not passing the sniff test. Now, you guys know I always give credit where credit is due. Unfortunately, I don't know where this came from on Twitter. But basically what it comes down to is the German Invictus Games sent a breakdown of expenses for the Dusseldorf Games from Invictus 2023 to one of the UK Parliament people. And it was proven that allocated expenses for Harry and Meghan was 24% of the budget that covered accommodations, security, and side events. And as far as the donors for their security, why are expenses being paid by private donations specifically allocated to them? He's the patron. Meghan shouldn't be there. She serves no purpose. And Invictus Games was hugely popular and successful until Megan came along and now it's financially sliding down the hill. And Invictus Games expenses have more than doubled. Why are those donations not paying for the vets hotel bills? I mean, they're on, most of them are on a limited income. Let me remind you that when Harry and Meghan went to Nigeria, it was supposed to be about Invictus Games and the foundation, which you never heard about. 
It was all about Megan and her heritage and her clothing and th them receiving gifts. And you wonder how much money Invictus directed to help pay for their Nigerian tour. If extra police protection cost that much money, what do you think like 10 days of it are going to be when they're in Vancouver during the games? What that shows me is everything that everybody was saying was absolutely true that the Invictus Games is using money that should go to veterans on Harry and Meghan. Absolutely. It come to find out it's all true. Now the Invictus Games just put out a notification. Don't forget August 9th marks Indigenous Day. Would those be the same people that Harry said he was going to talk to the king about, you know, their concerns, even though he's not a working royal? Invictus has turned into nothing but a cash cow for Harry and Meghan. They even got better up in there. Harry's personal, private, you know, thing that he's the chimpo of. This has turned into the Harry and Meghan show. No wonder Germany split off and is doing their own thing. Now, in the meantime, it's been announced that Birmingham in the UK is going to host the 2027 Invictus Games in July. Now, here's, here's the weird part. The UK backed this bid. Okay, this is a town that is in bankruptcy. They're having to shut their street lights off at night. They're not picking up trash. They have closed their libraries, okay, because they can't afford all of this stuff going on. But yet, they're going to host the Invictus Games. Everybody is saying, where is this money going to come from? If the government couldn't help them collect their trash and put their streetlights on and open up their library, how come the government is able to fund the Invictus Games? Because uh, the chief executive in Birmingham said the games are being paid for by central government funding. They've got a full government underwrite. Really? But then... It's also been said that they want the money to come from private sectors and they've been working hard to secure, you know, founding partners for these games. Let me tell you what the rumor is. You guys know I don't deal in rumors and innuendos. I usually only report on things that are absolutely proven, but this rumor is pretty big. And what they're saying is it was between Birmingham and Washington and Washington withdrew their offer. And why would they go there anyway? We have the Warrior Games and Harry fully admitted that he stole the idea for Invictus from the Warrior Games. So why in the heck would anybody do that? Does that make sense? Personally, I feel like people shouldn't donate to the Invictus Games. Um, the money, the screen, you know, the money is going not to where it should go. Over 2,000 veterans have dropped out of the games. Germany has splintered off and is doing their own thing. And let's not forget that when some higher ups pointed out what was going on, they were quote unquote reshuffled and right out of their positions. It really makes you wonder, you know, I, the countries that have to step up and put in bids have to realize what they're going to have to pay out in taxes. It's just crazy. You guys know what to do. Put your comments down. Don't forget to hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the bell for all notifications. And make sure that your device, whatever you're using, hasn't got all notifications marked off. You know what I'm saying. Okay, go down into the description box and hit the link for video number two. Follow me. Let's go.